I personally have had my encounters with Albino. He was the one that I went to interview with in Florida before he sent me over to Lourdes. When I went on the property to get to Elvira, which I've talked about a little bit previously, I was assaulted by Albino. Well, battery, whatever it is, he hit me in the face on my way off the property. I mean, these people are bold and they're disgusting and it's as if they have no souls. And I, well, I mean, what kind of guy is Albino? I'd like to hear your perspective on that. Albino is very distant all the time. Albino would only show up during at meals or we had new people there. He's always on his phone talking for hours and hours, walking around the farm. Having talked with him and asked him for help with my faith, he certainly has never given it. What I've seen is very self-centered, selfish. His nickname is the White Spider because he's everywhere, which is really creepy. Albino would poke fun at pretty much anybody. He has no mercy. He has no respect for anybody that he has only if they get them money only if they get them money he would treat other people as superior and other people like you were kind of saying it's like lord of the flies you know if you're not a bully if you're not mean and an asshole then you're not going to get anything he simply uh will go on EWTN and pretend to be some kind of leader or a uh, spiritual warrior, but really he he's only there for himself. I think he likes to see people hurt, and certainly he's never gone out of his way to help somebody who was struggling. And uh, there was a time, too, when a few of the other guys were, like, killing animals and sick shit, and Albino just was silent he didn't even do anything that for me is just really fucked up you know people killing animals for no reason not vegan but i just think that like it's not cool to do that yeah unfortunately none of that surprises me i didn't have to see him as often as you guys obviously i would see him in envia sometimes at the different like fests they would have and retreats and things overseas and then of course the few times that i was in florida None of this surprises me, but it still makes me sick to my stomach to hear about these things, even with everything that they put me through specifically. I think that they gave you the hard time because they knew exactly who brought you in and why. They made sure that they gave you the worst house to go to. You were treated like the enemy, I think, from square one. and. They wanted you to suffer probably the most because you wouldn't obey. They wanted you to think the way that they want you to think. The whole gaslighting is used by cults, meaning if you do what we tell you to do, we'll give you good food or you can have water breaks. Now you can run the women's house like I know they told you. That's what gaslighting is. They try to make you think that you're insane when you're not insane and then they just do reverse psychology. I wanted to ask you about the things that we were speaking about when when you were telling me about things that you saw in the Alabama or Florida properties that did not seem human or natural. As much as I've talked about this kind of thing before, it's one thing for people to hear it from me, one person, especially with all my other issues and everything else I've been exposing here. Yeah, if there's anything that you're okay with sharing regarding that. I think the bad spirits were a part of it. I think Really, there was no light from darkness, as they say. For me, I came out with more darkness, I think. I think I came out with more anger. And I was certainly lost for eight years. And um, one time, sounds funny, I don't expect anybody to believe me, but I saw this, like, uh, this, like, shiny mass that was, like, floating, and it was, like, slithering, as crazy as it sounds, right underneath the boards at the Florida house. And it just had no face. It had no body. It was just like, <laughs> it looked like from the Venom movie, the, like the black alien suit that Venom wears in the Spider-Man movie. I mean, if I could relate it to a Hollywood flick, yeah. And I saw these like glowing red eyes. That was the second thing I've seen there. I, I kept seeing these glowing red eyes in the dark and they were huge, huge eyes. I, I mean, there's no way that there's any kind of animal like that. And I kept hearing voices calling my name and and nobody was there there should be no reason that i was seeing all these weird things and i'm just using things because i don't know what they are as i certainly didn't see too much light there even though it's florida and it's the sunshine state but it was always that night and i had no clue what the hell it was 
no clue. And it just sunk into the ground out of nothing. Also, I was not under the influence of any medication. I was not under the influence of any alcohol or drugs or drug with withdrawals, alcohol withdrawals. I was 18, barely showed up with anything. Also was tested negative for schizophrenia. Well, you know, I believe you because I have seen things like that since I was a toddler, since back to my earliest memories. I definitely saw a lot of what I would say a lot worse, a lot more often even, which is crazy. It just, it just sounds insane to say that, knowing the life that I lived and where I came from before Chinocolo. But, you know, I definitely, I definitely think that affects and just kind of amplifies the abuse that they're committing in there and everything else. I just think it adds power these spiritual things and i think that they do it on purpose i don't think they do it on purpose i know they do it on purpose and they know what they're doing the whole system that they have is you're dirt you're worth nothing you're our slave give us what we want as far as trinoclo is concerned it's all about just being a slave that's what i would say it is albino he just kind of lets us all fight each other and fend for ourselves and we'll turn us all into enemies at the farm in florida where i was at they would uh joke around and say you look really out of your head but really when we're out of our head is when we're thinking about the reality wow this place sucks you know i want to get out of here i want to go home hey i have to stand in state three times this day that i uh you know was out of my head as they call it so it's a whole reverse psychology thing yeah, I remember the outside of your head thing. I remember that that's actually another one of their trigger phrases. Uh, lose your face is one of them that I've already exposed to people. Um, your outside of your head would be another one, and that's a trigger phrase for the dissociation. I wanted to also ask you on your perspective regarding Bishop Baker, because I know I brought up recently how he was involved <clears throat> with the DeClue family, and particularly my uncle for years, years and years before I ever knew about Chinocolo or entered Chinocolo. And I know you were talking to me about that, you know, there was one guy when you were there that attempted suicide on the property. You told me what Bishop Baker's reaction was to that. So if you wouldn't mind sharing that here. Bishop Baker's reaction to the man trying to commit suicide was simply, oh, well, it was the demon's fault and he was being attacked by demons or not that he needed a hospital or a professional to help him as far as what i've seen bishop baker's down with i think all of them he doesn't really care about the bad things about it yeah i'm sure he's aware of the bad things and i'm not afraid to speak up and say something about him i would say he's a very dishonorable man dishonor on you dishonor on your cow i certainly don't respect him that's what i have to say about that that was his reaction to it and the man tried to commit suicide with drinking a gallon of hand sanitizer and he just walked around drunk but that was a attempt to suicide most people don't survive that the very day that they smuggled me from France to Italy and they got me on the train, I developed an eczema condition the very day that they put me on the train to go to Italy. I'll never forget it. The first spot showed up, but it's called dishydrotic eczema. I didn't know what it was at the time, but it's brought on a lot of times by stress and autoimmune stuff. And this specific type of eczema, when it's really bad, which it was for me back then when it started, causes this blistering on your hand. And mine was so severe that by the time I was in Civiliano, I got to a point where there was hardly any skin on the palms of my hands at all. Like both palms of my hands, so the skin was off, just open skin. And they wouldn't let me bandage it. They wouldn't let me not wash the dishes and get my hands. So I was being forced to wash dirty dishes with no skin on my hands, like several layers of my skin just completely missing off my hands. They would not allow me to do anything to treat it.